So in lieu of Rudy from Alpha Investments removing a lot of his MetaZoo videos from his YouTube channel, I want to pose a new question for you guys. Where do you think MetaZoo would be today if Alpha Investments never hopped on board? It's a very interesting and intriguing question to ask. I know some of us have discussed this in the past, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it in the comment section below. Because to me, he's always been a double-edged sword. On one hand, he played a pivotal role in the very early success of MetaZoo kind of front of tons of different eyeballs and now grow the brand. But on the other hand, the majority of people that were watching his videos and that were buying into it because he told them to, were only doing it because they thought they could flip the boxes for profit. It was all about the free tendies because this dude never made any videos where he was talking about actually playing the game, never showed off any cards or collections he was buying himself. So to sit there and say that he's some sort of savior of MetaZoo and he was doing all this good for the brand just wasn't really true, right? And I was a huge advocate of this very early on because I was a big Rudy fan back then. I thought he was going to do wonders for the brand and help it grow and expand. But as time went on, it became more and more evident that he was causing more harm to the brand than good. He was like a cancer and he was just squeezing a drive every bit of life it had inside of it. Between him and Steve Aoki with all his NFTs and crypto bullshit, no wonder why everybody was calling this game a scam and associating some sort of pump and dump. And I really wish Medizu would have caught on to this very early on and cut ties with this guy because he wasn't bringing the proper audience that you need for a brand new game. I can understand when it comes to Pokemon and Magic the Gathering, they're established, they've been around for decades. If you want to push those games as some sort of investment vehicle, then by all means do so. But if the game is brand new, you want people that are actually passionate about the game. If you want to have long-term success, people are actually going to play the game and collect the cards, right? Not people are just buying into it because it's the next big thing. Then the moment that something else comes out, they jump ship and then your game crashes and dies. And unfortunately, that's what happened with MetaZoo. And it's happened with a lot of other games that Rudy's pushed in the past as well, right? And when that happens, he just completely abandons ship and sweeps it under the rug and acts like he had nothing to do with it. And it's absolutely disgusting. And that's why I feel so bad for these other games like Sorcery and Flesh and Blood that are also using Rudy to market their game. Because people are just going to associate your game as a pump and dump. Because that's kind of what this guy is. He's a show, right? I know a lot of people like to go to bat for him and say he's some kind of staple of the community. They actually cares about TCGs. It's like, I don't really believe it, right? Yeah, he used to play Magic back in the day. A little bit. I don't think he played it a lot, but a little bit. And sometimes he makes videos where he shows appreciation for good artwork. But it's like we all can appreciate good artwork from time to time. Doesn't mean that he doesn't have ill intentions behind the scenes, right? And we've all probably played a TCG at some point in our lives. It doesn't really mean anything. You know, but a lot of people say, oh, he's so good for the community. It's like, what is he ultimately doing? He isn't doing anything. I mean, this guy knew nothing about MetaZoo, and here he is pushing it. Like, he'd be opening a box for one of his patrons, pulling some of the best cards in the set, and having no idea. He'd be asking some of the most dumbass questions that anybody that knows anything about MetaZoo would have the answer to. It's like, why are you just soullessly shilling this shit? Because he wants to make the money. He doesn't care about the game. He never cared about the game. And that's what's so disgusting about it, right? And we saw it, because the moment that shit went south... This guy completely abandoned it. Instead of turning around and going, you know what, guys? I really believe in Michael Waddell's vision. I thought this was going to be the next big thing. I apologize for getting you guys to invest in this. It sucks, but it ended up crashing and burning. There's not much we can do. He turns around and goes, I never told anybody to invest in this. And actually, he didn't even say that. Verbatim, he actually said, I don't believe anybody thought this was investable. That's how disgusting this guy is, right? He doesn't want to put himself in the equation at all. He doesn't want to have any association with this game. It was up to us. It was our own fruition. This is why we bought the game. It had nothing to do with him. It wasn't because he was pushing as the next big Pokemon and this, that, and the other, right? We did it ourselves. We did it to ourselves. And it's absolutely disgusting. And now here he is removing some of his positive videos from his YouTube channel. So if somebody comes across his channel in the future, they're not even going to know that this guy was pushing the game. They're going to think he was shitting on it all along. He's some sort of genius. It's absolutely disgusting. Like, how can you be like a supporter of this guy and a fan and like a patron of his? I just don't understand, right? It doesn't make sense in my personal opinion. Like, I just don't get it, right? Like, why would you do this when this guy continues to do this shady shit? And it just pisses me off. Now, he's done this with other games in the past, but like Umu says, I don't think he's going to have success with MetaZoo because his face is all over the place. He's done tons of promo cards and play mats, so good luck is all I can say about that, right? I do think he plans on just sailing away into the sunset in a couple of years, so he probably doesn't care about his online image. But if he wants to continue to do this for the next several years, he better reevaluate himself, put those videos back up, and apologize. Just my personal opinion, but that's what he should do. Do because it comes off very, very scummy. And I know a lot of people just look the other way and they don't ultimately care, but I know it's his channel. He can do what he wants, but it just doesn't look good, right? 
But as far as MetaZoo itself, where do I think it would be today had he not hopped on board? It's so hard to say because there's so many different factors at play. I mean, it's like the domino effect. You change one thing and it changes everything else. MetaZoo can be in a completely different spot now than it was had he not hopped on board, right? I mean, there's just so many different ways you can look at this. And I ultimately think that he played a big factor in the game exploding very early on. So had that not happened, I think the game would be in a much healthier state because I knew about the game before Rudy pushed it. I know other people did. I think it could have grew, you know, very naturally in a healthier state. It would have been a niche game, but it could have grew out of LGSs, right? They could have actually crafted the game and made it something people wanted to play. But instead, it blew up very early on. I know some people say, oh, it's a scam out the gate. Mike was just trying to get people's money. And if you believe that, none of this applies. But I believe Mike had a vision. But the moment this game blew up, it just went off the rails. His ego took over and they started to do all this other bullshit, focus on stuff that they shouldn't have focused on. It's ultimately cost this game, right? I mean, they made a lot of bad decisions, but I think a lot of those bad decisions kind of stem from Rudy hopping on board. That's just my personal opinion. Now, would it have had the funds to actually push multiple sets in the future? I don't know. You know what I mean? Without it blowing up initially. Obviously, it did good for the game to have that many eyeballs on it. But in hindsight, it's just not the proper audience. Yes, you need some of those people in your ecosystem. You know what I mean? But you don't want too many. Because it's just going to kill your game ultimately. I think at its peak, it had like 20,000 fans. And I know a lot of people are going to say I'm crazy. Most of them weren't diehard fans. We found it out pretty quickly that they were fucking fair weather fans. Because the moment that the ship hit the iceberg, they were jumping ship. They were the first ones to turn around on eBay and just flip their collection for pennies on the dollar, right? And it's like, man, you're the ones that are sitting there saying you're going to hold on to this shit for life. You were lying out your ass. I used to think this game had a massive community. I used to go on Instagram and see all kinds of posts that Medizu would share all the time, every single day. Just hundreds of posts. And that this game was massive, but it turns out most of them didn't care. They were just there because it was the next big thing. They wanted to flip the boxes or whatever. And when the dust settled, there's just very few of us left, maybe 500 at best, and that's being generous. I think we'd have more now at this point had the game just grew more naturally. That's my opinion. You know what I mean? It's hard to say ultimately. And that's just the thing. Like if a game explodes very early on, is it bound to die? It's probably going to crash just as hard, but I don't think that has to be the case. If you catch it early on, you can kind of redirect it and rebound. But unfortunately, MetaZoo didn't do it. And a lot of these other games don't do it either. They just crash and burn, right? They go with the ship. And it sucks because if you grow naturally, you're going to face that adversity, right? If you're a brand new game and everything just goes your way, you're never going to know how to actually face adversity. If you face some kind of challenge head on, you're going to die, right? And it happened with MetaZoo because every time they put something up for sale, it sold out like gangbusters. They could pull something out of a trash can, slap MetaZoo on it and sell it and people would buy it. They're probably laughing their asses off selling us keycaps and all kinds of bullshit, right? It was a crazy time back then. But the reality is, man, they never faced any true adversity. You know what I mean? Because every single time it just sold out. And then the moment that they actually faced adversity, with like the Hello Kitty set flopping, they didn't know what to do. They jumped ship and they abandoned it. They're like, we can't handle this because we didn't actually grow in a steady, natural pace. We exploded to the top too quickly. We can't handle this. We don't know how to run the company. And unfortunately, it sucks. You need to be battle tested if you want to be a company that lasts long term, right? Like a lot of these other games that are established. And if you just blow up, you're not going to have that on your side. So ultimately, I think you probably are bound to fail if that ends up happening to you as well. You don't want that initial success. Yes, it's great to have those eyeballs. It looks great initially, but in the long term, let your game just grow more naturally. You know what I mean? And it's going to be much healthier in the long run. But that's just my personal opinion. What do you guys think? I'm sure you have all kinds of opinions and different perspectives on this because ultimately it's hard to say what it is is what it is. We can't change it now. It sucks. But I think medicine would be in a much better spot had he not hopped on board and we can't go back in time and fix that now. You know what I mean? It really, really sucks. He did a lot more harm to this game than good. And that's why I say, what the fuck were you doing, Meta, you having this guy push your game? You should have cut ties immediately when shit started to go south. But you just kept riding his coattails to the moon. And unfortunately, it came down just as hard as it went up. And I say, what the fuck are all these other games doing? We're still using Rudy to promote their games. It's just my personal opinion. Don't come at me. I'm not trying to sit there and, you know what I mean, defame him or anything. I'm just saying, in my personal opinion, from what I've seen, it's just not a good look. If you use this guy to push your game, your game is bound to die. It just is. Because he's not pushing the game for a collector's sake. He's not pushing it for the player's sake. There's other people out there who can do a much better job than he does. Find those people. They got big audiences as well. There's other people out there that actually care about TCGs. And it's not Rudy. 
It's not Rudy. We've seen it time and time again, the way that this guy acts. There's all kinds of disgusting stuff. And to sit there and just act like you're blind to it, like you can only do that for so long, you know? And it just gets crazy at that point in time. As they say, if you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, you're actually insane. And I feel like a lot of people are insane. A lot of his fans are insane. A lot of these other Kickstarter games that are coming out to this day are insane. People are still buying into this stuff like it's some sort of investment. Like you gotta stop this stuff, man. And Rudy's the one that's pushing this shit as an investment. And it's not a good look. It's not gonna be good for sorcery in the long run. Flesh and Blood's already butted heads with him. I'm surprised that they haven't separated ways at this point in time. Like you need to reassess yourselves and actually decide, do we want to have Rudy on board? Because it's not going to help you long term. That's just my personal opinion on it. But again, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it because this is a crazy subject. But I know some people are going to attack me in the comment section, the Rudy followers, and that's fine. But you know what I mean? Give me some proof that he doesn't hurt these games. That's what I want to see because ultimately it almost always costs the game. You know, in the long run, unless it's a game that's like, you know what I mean, Lorcana or, you know, something massive that just no way it's going to die, right? Like Magic's not going to die tomorrow. Pokemon's not going to die tomorrow. But these smaller indie games that are using the push it, they are bound to die. They're going to die anyways, but he just makes it even easier, right? Because they blow up so quickly. They don't know how to handle the success. And it just turns into a big pump and dump and everybody gets burned at the end of the day. And it absolutely sucks. <laughs> just look at it. Yeah. Well what the heck is that? <laughs> I mean, this shit's getting fucking crazy, man. And I gotta admit, there's probably a lot of people rooting for this to go down in flames. And can you really blame them? Here's a picture of my penis. New secret layer alert!